Well, good morning and welcome to this uh, service of morning prayer. It's lovely for you to join us. Um, all that you need this morning really is an order of service. Um, so we'll begin with a moment of silence. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our reading this morning comes from Philippians chapter 2, beginning at verse 6. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There's an interesting phrase in that uh, passage which um, has sort of made uh, theologians' heads scratch uh, of he emptied himself, that Jesus emptied himself. Um, and it's made theologians scratch their heads for a while because what does that mean? What, what does it mean for Jesus to empty himself, to become a human? Um, was he fully man or was he fully God? Could he put aside his godlike nature for a time. How does that work? Um, and it, it could sound a little bit like that um, that famous phrase of the how many angels can dance on the head of a pin. Is it really, does it matter? Does it really make any difference? Um, whereas that question, maybe I, I, I'd struggle to say that does matter. But for this, there is a real importance uh, to think about. And I thought just for this morning, We'd have a little look um, and just think about why. Do, what does it matter that Jesus emptied himself and took the form of a human? Um, it matters, I think, because if you look through church history, we've gone between these two points of fully God and fully human. Um, and when we see Jesus as fully God, you may have seen, uh, if you've ever been, especially over in Europe or at some Catholic churches or anything like that, and you'll see Jesus looking very different to maybe how uh, we tend to depict him yeah. with a very bright halo, uh, normally covered in gold, looking very ethereal, very um, otherworldly. Um, and uh, if you go back to medieval times, Jesus actually was quite scary. He was the revelation Jesus, the, the Jesus with um, flames and riding a horse and being uh, the uh, the God of judgment uh, and people are afraid and that's sort of where Mary comes in because uh, you pray to Mary uh, because Jesus was scary he was this otherworldly creature and so I think in a way they went the almost the hot, uh, too far on the pendulum they went fully God and lost his humanity and then I don't know if uh, you've been to the uh, the Vatican and you've seen this uh, it's a bit hard to see but uh, this sculpture in the basilica and it's just an incredible sculpture um, of the humanity of Jesus, of who he is, um, that he was fully man, that he felt he grew up as a baby, uh, he was born, he suffered, uh, he had pain, he laughed, uh, he experienced all of humanity and he died. And I think that's really good to, to connect with Jesus in that way, to have him as somebody that you can relate to that you could that he's not this otherworldly presence 
but actually you can talk to him, you can pray intimately to him because he knows what you're going through. He's done those things, he's been a human. Again, the pendulum can swing too much and you can have Jesus, the, the friend who will never tell you that you're wrong, that you're doing the wrong thing, uh, that you're actually hurting others. Um, he's, he's no longer God, he's just a mate. And so we've gone the other way. So is Jesus fully God or fully human? And the answer, um, unfortunately, is he's the both. He's both of these at the same time. Um, it's that passage in Philippians where it says that at, uh, I'll just read it out again. Where is it? Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name. So that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. We could spend a lot more time on how does that work? What, what happened? Did, did he somehow put aside his godlike nature when he was on, on earth? You could go into a lot of that and believe me, there are essays written on it and there's really good stuff. And if that interests you, do look into it a bit more. But for now, I think the important thing is that we somehow have to um, understand that God is not like us. God isn't another human. God is God and God can be different and God... Um, is uh, outside of our knowledge um, and that hurts our brains and I think that's okay um, but there's something important that God has revealed about himself that he was able to take the form of a human to live as a human but also to be um, our saviour and our king. I'm just going to finish with a picture that uh, I saw uh, it's of a place in, in Nazareth um, and it's at the Church of St Mary and I think it's a really good, um, it helped me to understand a little bit of why it's so important um, to understand who Jesus is. Um, and as I was walking into the church, um, if you've ever been, um, there's, uh, it's quite boring. You walk in and it's just a big uh, sort of hall and in the floor it suddenly goes, drops down and there's something in the middle and as you come a bit closer you see that uh, they've dug down and there's um, an old archaeological ruin and it's uh, it's a first century house and um, whether or not it is actually Mary's house that she grew up in and, and gave birth to Jesus um, is unknown, well, maybe we'll never know, um, but it definitely is a first century house that Mary would have maybe walked in um, and been around in. And there's a little altar there and it's such a holy place but it also feels... Um, very earthy. It feels like you're looking into a portion of time. But then if you look up, there's a, a circle missing from the, the roof and you can see up into a big pool of light. But it's not the roof. There's actually another room upstairs and you follow the steps up and then suddenly you're in uh, this beautiful world of gold. Everything is beautiful pictures, um, incredible artwork um, of of, of St Mary and, and that um, that period in the Bible of Jesus's birth um, and it's somehow manages to capture both of those in that building there is uh, the uh, eternal God Jesus as the king but then below it's that earthy nature of who he is his humanity I think we need both and um, we're going to sing uh, in a moment um, the the song uh, trust in the Lord with and um, it's got that great um, verse in it that says um, never be discouraged take it to the Lord in prayer now knowing that he is both man and God is so important because he knows what it is to fear he knows uh, what it is to worry to hurt but he's also our God and our King he's not just a person who's going to pat you on the shoulder and say there, there, it'll get better. This is somebody who is the creator of the universe, who can do something about it, who cares for you, who wants to be with you in your pain. He can do both of these things because he is Christ. So I hope that's an encouragement for you today. Hopefully, maybe your brains are a bit more stretched. Um, it's a great subject to look into, but it's also a really important part of who Jesus is. So let's sing together now. What? 
a friend we have in Jesus All our sins and griefs to bear What a privilege to carry Everything to Him in prayer Oh, what peace we often forfeit Oh, what needless pain we bear Oh, because we do not carry Everything to God in prayer Have we trials and temptations Is there trouble anywhere We should never be discouraged Take it to the Lord in prayer Can we find a friend so faithful Who will all our sorrow share Jesus knows our every weakness Take it to the Lord in prayer Are we weak and heavy laden Cumbered with a load of care Jesus only is our refuge Take it to the Lord in prayer Do Thy friends despise, forsake thee, take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield thee, thou wilt find a solace there. Let's continue in that state of prayer to take all our worries, our difficulties and take it to the Lord first. I'm going to leave uh, some silence as we pray um, and I just encourage you to, to bring anything this morning, to, to start the day with leading those worries that you've um, that you have to Christ. Maybe you already have a plan of how to fix them, but take them to Christ first and see if those plans change, if he can uh, put down those things which you don't need to worry about or give you new ideas on how to solve those things that maybe hadn't even crossed your mind. So let's take it to the Lord in prayer. Amen. Please do pause the video if you want to carry on. The beauty of this uh, technology is we can stay as long as we need. Um, but also if, if you're ready to move on, uh, just uh, yeah, carry on the video. And we'll say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Well, hopefully your brain's not hurting too much, um, but um, I'm just going to finish with a prayer of blessing. And I pray that you do have a very blessed week. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always, now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>